So my main job is really just building community for all of us. And another full disclosure sort of thing, I'm also waiting for like one of my youths to come in here because they're gonna be the main ones facilitating this program as well as showing you all exactly how to vote potentially. But when they come in, they'll just come in and without further ado, we're gonna jump into it. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to introduce themselves outside of me or if you all just wanna do it, but what you can do is just in a chat, just on write down your preferred name. If you can, let me know what intrigued you about coming to this program in the first place. And let me know your favorite color. Let's switch it up a little. So preferred name, what brought you here and your favorite color. And while you all do that, I guess I could give you all some information about me. So my nickname is Davey. Um, I do not like to be called Dave because it has like negative connotations in my head. Whenever I hear the name Dave, I always think of like some white plumber who's like slightly overweight with like their butt crack out. So that's why I do not like being called Dave whatsoever. The dog isn't working for me. Samira, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not that much of a tech list. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, what brought me here? So honestly, I was supposed to do this um, presentation for you all last year. But as you all know, we're still operating in a pandemic. So <laughs> we're just gonna do it today virtually. And I really do hope that like you all really do learn about the ballroom scene and more importantly, its roots when it comes down to like Korean trans people of color. And as of recently, my favorite color, it used to be brown, but it's slowly transitioning back into yellow. Don't ask why. <laughs> Um, Cooper, it's so nice to meet you. Now, let me get into these comments. So um, a random, random fun fact, if you all love fun facts about facilitators, um, I love to do this thing. So like a lot of times when people are like on Facebook Live, they like get real close and start like reading the comments like, okay, who we got here today? Who we got here today? So I'm about to just look at the chats real quickly, just so hopefully I could develop a more intimate relationship with you all and then could just go from there. And if you all didn't know, um, I also like to sing, even though I don't have a really great singing voice whatsoever. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm Cooper, I'm so happy that you like LGBTQ plus history. Um, you're definitely gonna get a lot of history in this. Your favorite color is orange. That's so odd. The reason why it's odd is because um, I had like, maybe trauma isn't the best word, but like I always strayed away from the color orange just based off people talking about orange back in high school and how it made me look. But I'm slowly growing into the color orange more and more. Um, and nobody else feels like, you know, telling me y'all preferred names or what brought you here or even your favorite color. We could just start. Cool with y'all. I'm gonna just pretend that you lost it. yeah. So let's see. So in touch with the ballroom scene, how slides matter, facilitated by me for the time being. So ideally, this is everything that we're gonna get in today. I'm gonna give you all a brief history lesson about the ballroom scene, like how it actually came to be. I'm going to educate you all about what houses actually are. We're gonna talk about balls, their importance to the scene, get into um, categories, and then I'm going to try my hardest to show you all how to vogue. Now, if you do not know how to vogue, I don't want to say baby that's on you, but you definitely can learn. I've always grown up with two left feet. I never had rhythm, but this year I started to take on voguing a bit more seriously. And last week I walked in like my first off like the performance category. So I could tell you all more about that. But the reason why I'm saying is there is hope for everybody out there. Because ideally when this comes out to vogue, it's really just about being confident, but more importantly, just being yourself. Oh, ground rules, because you know that's really important. If you all have like any questions, um, feel free to just don't inside the chats. Um, if you want to wait to the end, you can wait to the end if that's cool with you. Um, like I said, I want this to be as interactive as possible. So if you all do have like questions and stuff, just throw them in as they come in and I'll try to answer them as quick as possible. Um, keep y'all screens on mute. You know, I think that's kind of basic at this point since we've all been doing Zoom and virtual meetings like 
every single month since this pandemic hit. And I guess the last thing is just to try to have as much fun, no matter where you're at. Sorry, guys, that, Samira, it's cool. Maybe we all have internet issues. Like, if only you knew how bad the Wi Fi here was at the Mocha Center, you would really understand where I'm coming from. But we all have internet issues. So, the ballroom scene ideally started in the late 19th century. So there used to be like these whole like drag ball things where like people within like the LGBT plus community used to like create like our own different spaces where like men or like um, gender non conforming people or even trans people will um, dress and drag in order to provide like a sense of like entertainment and community um, from other individuals. Um, as a lot of people probably know or um, even didn't know, um, it wasn't always legal to be queer or even like legal to be like outwardly queer. So a lot of times when people wore like certain articles or clothing that kind of like gave them away, they could potentially be like arrested and things like that. So in order for us and by us as people, part of like the LGBT plus community, in order for us to feel safe and have like our own spaces, we created these drag balls in order for us to really express ourselves as freely as possible. However, Oh yeah, I want to give y'all this information. However, like when it did come down to like um some of like um, the drag balls like in the beginning, um, there was still like a lot of like racial discrimination in them. And a lot of times like black and like brown like queens of color, we weren't always affirmed or better yet, like our aesthetics just wasn't like that accepted by other people. So if you all really like watching like documentaries and movies and stuff like that, I highly suggest that you all watch Queen. Um, Queen is a documentary that really just um really explains like what the drag ball scene used to look like before it transitioned to just like the ballroom scene. Um, and it also shows like the racial discrimination and how one queen by the name of Chris Asia, who's very, very near and dear to my heart, why she motivated herself and other people to create a more inclusive scene for black and brown community members. Because as people know, just because like you're queer or trans doesn't really exclude you from being like racist or even discriminatory to like people of color. So this is why like the ballroom scene really just gave a space for like queer and trans people of color because even with being like in queer spaces like the um, drag law scene, we, i.e. people who look like me and I hope other people on this call look like me as well, we weren't just always like affirmed in these spaces. Like we still had to do with like our own, oh wait, facilitators. Michael and um, Ali, am I allowed to curse in here or no? I mean, I should have asked for permission, but you know, okay, whatever, whatever. A lot of times- <laughs> This is being recorded, so- <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna keep it PG-18. A lot of times um, when you look like me, people really just don't necessarily fully care about you because they just don't understand. So in order for us to like really make spaces, we just, in order for us to fill a fern and in order for us to all really take care of our own, we had to make our own spaces. And that's really like the beginning of like ballroom scene. So as I said before, I'm just gonna read out some of these bullet points and then we're just gonna have like a larger conversation about it. So just talking about like racial discrimination, as you all should know, like at this point, and if you don't know, please excuse like my ignorance or even me assuming, um, racial discrimination is basically just like when people choose to other you simply based off like the color of your skin or even like how much like blackness is inside like your blood. So when it came down to like the racial discrimination, like how it played out in like the drag ball scenes, it pre prevented like black performers from like actually receiving like prize money. So like if people didn't know, a lot of times when you go to like these balls, like these functions, you're not just going to like be in a safe space, it's a competitive environment. And if you're like me, I love a good competition. This is why I did like sports and stuff like in high school. But even now I love competitions because it makes me feel good about myself. But what makes me feel even better is winning trophies and winning money. It's one thing to be the best of the best, but it's also another thing to be receiving money and things like that for what you're doing. Because as you all know, Bill's got to get paid. Oh wait, you all are young, oh my God. <laughs> when you all get older, and if you are paying like your cell phone bill, you do understand like bills have to get paid. So it only makes sense for you to get paid for a thing that you love. Um, black judges weren't allowed. And the reason why that's the issue is like, a lot of times, like when it comes down to representation, um, we support and stick up for people who look like us because that's just like the easiest thing to do. So if the panel of judges is only mainly white people, it's easy for them to only favor and select white winners. So it's only like diminishing like black queens and like black performers ability to win in the first place because the representation just wasn't there. 
Um, this discrimination also just, like I said before, it led to people like um, Lottie and Crystal Deja, the two women um, on the screen right now. It led to them just making like our own space for ourselves because like there's only so many times you're just gonna be like kicked down or like pushed aside or even just discarded before you just get tired of it. And then, like I said before, like when it came down to um, Chris Labeja, like she started like one of the first houses like in New York City and she called it the House of Labeja. The reason why she called it the House of Labeja is because her last name was Labeja. And ideally, as you all know, a house is just like a place of like support and it's really just like where people get like that familiar support from. So she's like one of the first founding um, mothers of a house. Um, to the people who don't know, ideally a house is just like, it's basically just like a mini creative fit. Well, some of them could be small, but it's just like a creative family that you all just make from people who just like live similar experience to you. So if you all didn't know, back in like um, the early like 1900s and like um, 1800s as well, a lot of times like parents and people were just like cooking out like their kids like left to right if they identified as trans or like they came out as gay because one is just like um, a fear. My bad, all these like chats and stuff are just popping up and it's like really distracting. But a lot of times, like due to like homophobia and transphobia, like parents were just like kicking out their kids like left to right. So now, if you have like these queer and like trans kids, it's like nowhere to go but like the streets. You have people like stepping up, so like older like queer and gay mentors just stepping up to really just like take in like these kids as their own. So that's like where the term like um gay parents, like gay mother or gay father, comes into place because like ideally somebody somebody like me because I have like my own gay kids and stuff. But I do like these individuals chose to like foster and support these kids. They chose to like be like their extended parents because like they really didn't have anybody. So that's like where the whole like houses scene came from. And like I said, if you have questions, let me know. So I'm just gonna read this straight up. So houses are going to turn to families primarily consistent grand trans people of color. Their allies are also included as well, but mainly it's just like other grand trans people of color. And like I said, they're really just meant to provide shelter because like, if you don't have anywhere to go, especially just, just taking the concept of like the 1900s, there are not many resources for like gay people already. You don't have like homeless shelters. You don't have like transitional homes. Like you don't have like too many resources to actually look out for people like us. So this is why I really just want to stress that like why mentorship is like really, really important, but also why chosen families are important as well because like, if you're not getting those resources, you're going to outsource. And sometimes when you outsource, you can just put yourself like in a more and more dangerous position. And by dangerous position, like using things like sex and drugs to cope with the fact that like, you know, you're lonely and you're by yourself. So this is why it's so important for like gay people to like step up and provide support whenever the hell you can. Hell is not a bad word, whatever. But I do like whenever you can, because like, there's always gonna be somebody who needs help. There's always gonna be somebody who's like less fortunate to you. And better yet, if you have like the capability and the capacity to support, why not get that support? So like I said, houses are led by ideally like a mother and a father. Um, but when it comes out to like these actual titles, they are not limited to like somebody's like gender expression. So um, just to open up to you all, I do identify as queer and I am like also like a non-binary individual. However, I have people who call me mother to this day because like I am just like a nurturing individual. So I am like somebody's like gay mother. However, when I am feeling a bit more masked or whatever, people can call me like a father. So like those words, really doesn't, they don't mean that much, but it just goes back to like how an individual views themselves. So if I'm feeling a bit more nurturing or even like if I'm feeling a bit more feminine, I might just tell like my kids and stuff, I'm mother or just call me my mom or mother or whatever the case may be. So it really just goes back like to individual and like their relationship like with their kids in the first place. So I know I told y'all earlier about how like Crystal LaBeja named her house a house in LaBeja. So a lot of times, when it came down to like certain like house figures, they chose to give like their unofficial last name to everybody like in their own family. So say if I wanted to start a house and I said, my house is going to be called the house of Santana. Whoever joins my house, especially if I consider them one of my kids, their name is now going to be Santana. So with one of my kids in real life, her name is Jalen. If I was to start an actual house, as soon as she starts walking in balls and being a part of my family, her name would be Jalen Santana, especially like in a ballroom world. Can she legally change her name to that? Of course. Does she have to? No. 
But ideally, it's just like, if you're part of my house, you're going to get like this surname. And when it came down to like these names, especially like in the 1900s and stuff, a lot of these names were really just based off of like different like um, fashion designers and stuff. Because, I mean, not to like assume, but like a lot of times when it comes down to like being like queer, we really, I'll speak from my experiences. I love to express myself. And a lot of times the best way to express yourself is through fashion. So we looked up like these different like fashion heads and stuff and like took their names. So like when you hear things like Muglia, I hope you know like who Muglia is. If not, just Google the name, but like Muglia, Balenciaga, Extravaganza, like a lot of these different names, like they do come from like on the fashion world, but sometimes who they come from just like personal influences as well. So if we're talking like the House of Ninja, the founding, one of the founding fathers was um, Willie Ninja. If you watch um, Paris is Burning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The reason why he chose the name Ninja is because he really valued like this Japanese aesthetic, but also having kind of like very straight and linear moves, kind of like a ninja in a way. So like, it's only fitting that he calls himself like Willie Ninja and he's the house of Ninja. Um, if you all want to learn more about like names and stuff, aside from watching um, Paris is Burning, I'm pretty sure you all watch Pose, but also check out, oh my God, what's it called, what's it called, what's it called? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Legendary. You should really, really watch Legendary season two is coming out May 2nd or May 5th by HBO. It's a really, really great show. And more importantly, it shows you like the communal relationship between like the ballroom scene, but it also shows you a more in-depth look about Vogue. And like I said before, um, when it comes down to the ballroom scene, a lot of times people perform in order to win trophies and to gain more and more recognition. So I guess if anybody out there on these screens did something like track or even played like bowling or something like that, when you have like that track and field community or like that bowling community, you get recognition within like that specific sector. Um, a lot of times, like if somebody playing chess, for an example, a chess person probably won't understand all their um, awards and recognition that like a track star made. But it just feels good, like when your community knows like who you are. So that's where, like the recognition that all people are like talking about. And the more trophies you win, the more legendary you become because your family or your house is just that successful. Like they're just that girl, like right? that boy, where they could just win trophies like crazy. And that's always like the aim of the game in a way. So, boss, y'all can read the screen. I don't need the screen to explain what a ball is. It is very. It's very hard to explain, especially to somebody who's never been to a ball. But ideally speaking, as I said before, it's really just a space where queer and trans people and allies as well come to join in order to show off their skill sets to a panel of esteemed judges. So ideally in every single ball, you're always gonna have like an odd number of judges. The reason why you have an odd number is because you can't have like, you are, you're always gonna need somebody to like break like a tiebreaker. So say if like, if you look at the screen right now, say if this woman and this person right here are battling against each other. If you have six judges and three vote for her and the other three vote for him, who's gonna break the tie? That's why you always see um, an odd number of judges. These judges are ideally on um, people who've been like in a ballroom scene for like X amount of years. They know every single category and better yet, they know how to judge other people. Um, when it comes down to like the judges panel, you're not always going to have people like from the same houses because that's how favoritism usually comes about. And a lot of times when it comes down to like the ballroom scene, it can be very political. Um, if you all go to balls or even just like watch like ballroom clips and stuff, like you can see like the politics of it. But this is why people just should have like different houses on their own panel and different like gender expressions as well. So you're not always going to see like a panel just like all black gay men, for an example. You're also gonna have like trans men, you're also gonna have trans women. So it's like, you always want to have some variety there because everybody's going to be looking for something completely different. And I bet you all are wondering now, okay, but David, like what exactly are the judges looking for? I'm so glad nobody asked really because you're all probably thinking. <laughs> So these are just like some of the categories that judges are looking at. So there are way more categories just these six, but these are like the main ones. So runway is pretty self-explanatory. Ideally, it's just like how fierce can you like walk? So I'm gonna take a step back. We're gonna just visualize for a quick second. We're gonna imagine like this is like where the judges are. It's a straight table, five people there. You then have like a crowd of people like surrounding you. 
And then like once like the MC like drops the beat or calls a performance, whoever's doing Romy just does like their best walk to the song. If the judges see it, they'll give you your tens. If one judge doesn't see it for you, baby, you might get chopped. One chop basically means you're out, you're not gonna advance forward, you tried your hardest, try again at the next function, all right? So runway ideally is really just like, how fierce can you walk to a beat? So really just think of somebody like Naomi Campbell, for an example, or even Rihanna, just like somebody who's very, very fierce, owns every single step that they do, and more importantly, is just confident in what they can do. When it comes down to the face category, I think it's not the same thing that's so self-explanatory. It's only self-explanatory to me because like, I kind of lose this life and stuff. But face ideally is just like how beautiful like your face is, like how symmetrical everything is, how clear your skin is, um, how well can you, like, you sell your face to a song. So if you all watch RuPaul's Drag Race, for an example, as you know, um, all the contestants have to lip sync. And when you lip sync, you oftentimes have to like sell your face. You have to emote something. And the best lip singers, they just have like a really, really good face and they're just good at what they do and stuff. So face is just like how well could like you sell your face, how captivating can you look? And like I said, it's, it makes sense like once you just watch it. Realness, it's weird to explain, mainly because like there's like levels like realness, like one um, realness category is like um, female figure realness. Um, with a female figure, female figure realness category basically just acts like um, different like trans women or um, women are, like trans experience to ideally sell like how real they look or like how unclockable they look as well. So a lot of times like I'm um, in a ballroom scene, we do reinforce like the, bion the binary. It isn't always good to do that. However, there is categories for everybody. So if my daughter was here, I would show y'all like how unclockable she is like um, as a woman because ideally this is a category she would easily excel in because she chooses to conform to like a female beauty standard so she could easily win like a female category. So when it comes down to like the, um, the woman over here, her name is Kia Lavesha. Um, she is a trans woman, but I'm pretty sure like none of you will probably be able to know that. So with her being unclockable, she can easily excel like in a realness category. So I really hope that explains it. Um, there's other things for like realness, like you oftentimes have like um, pretty boy realness, trans man realness, so, like, there's almost a realness category for um, anybody, even if you are like non-binary, you really just have to find like what category works for you. When it comes down to body, self-explanatory. <laughs> self-explanatory, but it really is just like how good your body looks. Like the ballroom scene really does like appreciate like um, diversity. And at the end of the day, like somebody might not accept like my body figure, but if I think my body is just really, really beautiful, I'm gonna sell it as best as I can. Um, so we have a lucky, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry, my man, <laughs> she just be looking so damn good. Um, you can introduce yourself using this one right here. Okay. So name, what brought you here today in your favorite color? Um, I'm Paisley. I'm here because David asked me to come to help out. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I would love to be here anytime. My favorite color is forest and beige. I hate you. <laughs> so, um, excuse me, sorry, so keeping it cute. Paisley is, um, I do like um, up and coming individual in the ballroom scene. Um, Paisley has been invested in the scene for about two to three years now. And yeah, Paisley's like, I'm seeing one of the reasons why I take ballroom so seriously now. Um, no problem. Do you want to share like some of the categories that you walk? Oh, so I walk hand performance, Runway and virgin performance. So I'll explain what hand performance is, and then um, Paisley could explain what sex hiring is. So when it comes on to um, hand performance, ideally it's just like how well can like you tell a story on um, with your hands. So what this looks like at an actual ball is you'll sit down in the chair. Just imagine mm -hmm. I'm sitting down if you can, and you'll just like start just rolling inside whatever beat that you want, and if the judges see it they'll give you your tens. If they don't, they'll just chop you. Um, the reason why you sit down in a chair ideally is because like they only want to see your hands. They don't want to see you start like kicking, they don't see you start duck walking, they don't see none of that. It is solely just hands. Want to explain sex signing? Of course, so sex signing basically is about just selling the idea of you're the sexiest person alive, you know? It's about 
go reaching deep into yourself and really, you know, like that Beyonce song, Freaking Dress, basically like that type of thing, you know, like you just want to embrace the sex of yourself and just make others feel that also and just sell it, you know, everything is about selling it. So like I said, like earlier, um, a lot of this could be put into context if you really just go on YouTube, you just simply search up like um, runway ballroom scene, like for an example, and you can actually see like these categories placed out because it's not just like how you sell it in terms of like makes like your face looks good or like your one way walk is really, really fierce. There's also a lot of times like certain themes associated with these categories as well. So like for sex hammer, for an example, um, say if the ball was like comic book themed and more specifically with sex hammer, it's like, oh, bring it as Captain America, for an example. Okay, wait, no, let me pick a black reference. Bring, <laughs> bring it as Black Panther. <laughs> Bring it to Black Panther. So it's like the theme itself is Black Panther, but how I might show up Black Panther could be completely different from like Paisley or like somebody completely different. So that's like where like the fun element of Vogue like comes into place. It's just like how well can you wander the category and how well do you fit the theme as well? So last week or two weeks ago, like when me and Paisley both did performance, the ball was like um the lottery ball. So ideally, you know, money, green, things like that. And for the performance category, it said bringing in black and green. Um, I was not fully wearing black and green, so I was really, really shocked that I did not get chopped. But <laughs> everybody else did wear just straight black and green. I wore you know, a whole lot of white, a little bit of green. But I didn't get chopped because like the judges understood, you know, you try and you do things, but not everybody's going to be that lenient. So like that's why, those are like other reasons why you can get chopped. Either like your performance just isn't that good, or you're not following the actual category. Any questions? Like I said, keep them in the chats. Cool. So now we're just gonna explain. Um, thank you. Um, now we're just gonna explain like every single element when it comes down to voting. So there are five elements. And if you do not do each and every single element, a judge might chop you. So like when it pays these good homegirls, they sat really upset. They got chopped and they were almost on this close to like on winning. The reason why they didn't get chopped because like they didn't duck walk. However, their performance, in my opinion, everybody else's opinion was so much better than the person that they went against. So I'll start off with the um, first two, duck walk and catwalk, and then pays between the last three. So ideally duck walking, and we're also gonna show you these things as well. So it just puts a lot of things that come into context. So a duck walk is ideally like when um, you kick your feet, yeah, let's, let's see if this works. It's ideal like when you cross down a little low and you kick your feet just up and out, up and up, well, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, it resembles um the Russian, the Russian, what's it called, the Russian kick? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, um, listen, when I first heard of it, I did not know what a Russian kick was, but you all probably might. So, like I said, it's like when you just kick out left and right, like really, really quickly. Um, when it comes on the catwalk, Catwalk is kind of similar to runway, but yet you're still doing it to the beat. And then you're also using like your hands and stuff to like, so like a catwalk. So actually, no, we're not about to do this right now. We're gonna do it next. We're gonna get the beats and everything. Period. Hands. <laughs> okay, so hand performance basically is, um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can do better. Okay, so hand performance basically is just telling the story with your hands, you know? Like really, you come up with an idea. So say you wanna do water, for example. Just make your hands just resemble water, like. Fluidity, water. Very much flowing and just like fluidity and stuff like that. You just want to make sure that your hands are, you know, it depends on like the song, the beat. Um, so like we were talking about earlier, hand performance, you want to sit down because sometimes if you touch your legs or like you move your legs in the actual ball, it will chop you. It's strictly hand performance. So that means, Waist up, just give me hands, you know? When it comes down to floor performance, I suck at floor performance, so I should not be explaining. <laughs> but floor performance is ideal, like you being somewhat on the floor, but you're also being like sexy and like captivating with it. So like you could be like on your back, you can like swing your legs around, you can do a figure eight with your own legs. So it's really just like how you're on the ground. You can even crawl to make it look sexy, but then you can also transition to something like um, a duck walk or a cat walk. And then probably what everybody knows is spins and depths. So it's very, very self-explanatory. It's really just like how you spin, 
then how you dip it low down to the floor. Um, I'm just gonna let y'all know this one time. <laughs> it is not called a death drop. It is solely just called a dip. When you hear a death drop, I know probably all you probably think like RuPaul Drag Race and things like that. But a lot of times like certain words are really just taken out of context and people really just don't do like their research. So it's simply just called a dip. When y'all probably think of a, a little death drop or a shablam, dumb people would just be hurting their backs way too much because they're trying to get like that very loud, very dramatic effect. And that effect is not always needed. Sometimes you can keep it real soft and cut. Still, that's the actual words so I can say that, even though this is all being recorded. But you can also just keep it really, really cute. But like, however you choose to dip is how you choose to dip. But you do not have to slam your back on the ground. We do not want you to hurt anything. So as you can see, like with this individual um, over here, they're about to be very, very, is it show pose? Pose is very, very um, accurate. Um, pose is not always going to explain like every single element, but it does give like a general concept of like of the ballroom scene. Um, family support and also like it gives you like a really good historical sense about like how the ballroom scene emerged and more importantly how like they interact to draw like the HIV and AIDS epidemic. So it's a good start and the good thing about Ryan Murphy on um, the director and how he also included people like from the ballroom scene is um, he also included like some actual like um, historical like, elements into like um, the show as well. So I would like yeah please start watching Pose. Um, and if you can, just like go on like YouTube and search of like um, what like the pose character is based off of, just so you can have like that um, additional historical lens. So um, if you want to be like me, first I watched on um, Paris is Burning many many years ago, and then I watched Pose because a lot of times like Paris is Burning would give you like the language and like that actual visuals because it is like an actual documentary, and then Pose would give you like that more. Okay, this is real cute. I can do it. Yeah, hold on, let me get to Samira. We about to have a whole conversation without y'all. You can see my girl talking about. Let me show you my Samira. Oh, Samira, oh girl, my bad. Yeah, Samira, come on, lavender. So it is very, very accurate. Oh, so it's not as accurate as like how balls are now. It's accurate in the sense of like um how balls used to operate from like um the mid. 1980s like the early um 1990s because that's like when the um show was at um things have changed like very very drastically especially with the addition of um categories the ballroom scene being more and more inclusive and then also like the style of voguing as well so like when you watch pose and like you watch um paris is burning that's kind of like old school like the, the old way when it comes out to voguing so it's like way more linear um it's not as like um dramatic and it's not as like quick as it is now um I mean, the last season has come. <laughs> We're really having a whole conversation. My bad, <laughs> But um, I mean, the last season is approaching. But um, sadly, like, all good things well, must come to an end. And Pose is still like a really, really great show. I'm curious about what season three about to get the girls. But um, yeah. we could talk. No, you ain't got to apologize. <laughs> My bad, we was about to have a whole conversation. You might be facilitating with us. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, 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 yes. So those are like um all like the five elements of Vogue. Um, and when it comes down to it, like everybody has like their own unique style of um, voguing. And this is like what I was telling you all like um, in the beginning. Um, you all do not have to be like skilled dancers. What matters most is just like catching the beat. So knowing like your basic little count. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Knowing the beat, knowing the elements, and really just like knowing who you are. So like my style of voguing, very interesting, but it's also different um, from Paisley's. And it's also different from like so many other different people because that's the beauty of Vogue, right? You can make it however you want to make it to be. So if you want to keep it all soft and cute and cut, you could gladly do that. Want to be more aggressive? You can do that. But like I said, it's really just making it your own and just trying to tell your story through your body. And ideally, anybody can do that. Any other questions before we get into that? I'm just going to imagine that um, somebody I just shook your head and I'm just like, yeah, I just get all with it. <laughs> so this is our faces. I know. <laughs> I gotta update your picture. <laughs> but um, Jalen was supposed to be here. Um, as I told y'all earlier, um, that is my daughter, Jalen. Um, she is a daddy in all the best ways. That's me. And 
Paisley is a wonderful shape shifter. Um, if you want to connect with us more, here are like some of our social media handles. But the program is not over. Do not think it's over. I'm about to play a nice little beat. And then me and Paisley are just going to show you the elements uh, one by one. And then if anybody wants to actually attempt to vote, you can more than welcome, you're more than welcome to show us. Y'all don't have to if y'all don't know this, but it's cool. I'm just gonna imagine that y'all are clapping and saying, oh my gosh, Davey and Paisley, y'all did such a great job. <laughs> Thank y'all, oh my God. <laughs> wow. You did it. We did a did job. <laughs> Um, you're fine with this song? Sure. Girl. Let's see. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah. I'm going to do, do hands? Yeah. All right. So don't mind me. I'm just going to move our camera just so we can really get into it. Catwalk, hands, spins, and peanuts. <laughs> the energy is given was supposed to get. It's all like some energy, though. She be on She be on the tea. And actually, we're a little, little tired. <laughs> Just a little. Whew. Hold on, let me stop the screen really, really quickly. <sighs> so, <laughs> like I said, um, as I'm showing y'all, voguing is really, really tiring. This is why it's always good to practice, stretch, stay hydrated, and also just doing it with people that you love and like people that affirm you. So every Thursday, me and Paisley and some of the other girls, we went out to the dance studio and we just vogue into like our heart's content because ideally speaking, we all just want to be the best at what we can do. And one of our main focuses is, I'm catching my breath, y'all. <sighs> one of my main focuses is like really bring like the ballroom scene back to Buffalo, New York, just so like we could really like show you all, or better yet, just so like y'all could really just experience like a deeper sense of communion. <sighs> and so like I want like trophies and money and things like that. Um, to my knowledge, there will be a ball coming up in Buffalo over the summer. I will give you all more information. I'll be also be sure to um, let us know when that ball is going to happen so y'all can participate in more. Whew. I'm trying to catch my breath, y'all, still. I didn't stretch as hard as I should have. Um, but yeah, we basically showed you all the fire on this vote. I mean, you, you see the set? You see the set? Oh, you don't know what Morehouse is at all. Wow. So Morehouse is the HBCU, um, historically black, it's a historically black college. Um, 
when it came down to the person on um, the clip that we use, um, I don't know that person. I only do like so much research. I'm just really, really good at finding visuals and stuff. But Mar Hustle is a really, really great college. Um, is only for men at this time being. Um, they recently included. Wow, he really just left us. Wow, but whatever. Um, they also um recently included like um trans men to be like um in the mix as well, which is really, really good at progressive for them. But they still have like a long way to go. But if you are like um a person of color and you are looking to um, go to school outside of um, Buffalo, New York, I really, really do suggest that um, you just research on um, Morehouse College is in Atlanta, Georgia. And it is really just a really, really great um, environment. Um, that's like one regret I do have is like not transferring schools earlier to go to um, Morehouse. Um, I stayed in Buffalo and I went to Madai and I was like this close to this transferring, but I went to school for free. <laughs> you know, I ain't want that much debt, but is really just about on your experience and sometimes it doesn't matter like how much money you pour into it because you're going to have like really really great resources so um definitely look at Morehouse um it's a really really great college and I know like so many great men like who graduated from there and I know so many great men who are still in Morehouse right now so that's just, um, what Morehouse is <sighs> and I'm still catching my breath y'all because I'm just like that passionate today but <laughs> If you all have like any other questions or um, trying to give us like, you know, some compliments and things like that, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, and like I said before, if you want to connect with us more, just look us up on Instagram, look us up on Facebook. If you want to um, connect with me more, um, search up Davy Daddy on Instagram. I'm always around to like support people, know with people, and also on um, the people know like, you know, what's really good, especially because I'm to the bottom of the scene. Um, any closing messages from you guys? Um, Remember to love yourself. <laughs> Keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. I'm kidding. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I'm on Facebook as um, what's my name on Facebook? It's not Paisley Guy of Rice. I was about your old name. I don't know. Paisley Guy Rice. Um, when it comes out to my individual on um, social media handle, like I said, it's Davy Daddy. D-A-V-E-Y, D-A-D-D-Y, um, yeah. Um, when it comes down to like our organizations that we um, serve and uplift and that we um, currently work for for the time being, um, the Mocha Center is a really great space for um, queer and trans people of color, especially living in Buffalo, New York. Um, the Shade Project is really, really great for youth just like you. And yeah, I really do hope to see y'all at a ball one day. I really hope that you all um, start to take voguing a bit more seriously. Or even at the Ombre Marymount, I really do hope that y'all learn something just about the scene and about your community and your culture. Cooper, go <laughs> You too, enjoy the rest of your day on this beautiful Monday. Um, but I really hope that this program is like as intimate to y'all as possible. I understand that's kind of hard to do over the screens, but I really do hope that y'all have fun hanging out with us as we have fun hanging out with y'all. So, you know, you all can leave now. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for being here. Thank you, David and Paisley for that great presentation. You both are amazing. Um, for our youth in here, um, if you are planning on joining our next workshop in this room, um, we have our PSAs from the peeps uh, over at Nax. So if you want um, to attend that presentation, you can see right here and that'll start at five. Um, if not, um, our next time slot for workshop B um, is uh, bisexuality, a whole full identity. So you can go over to the other Zoom link. Um, and thank you everyone again, this was great. Bye Samaria and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but really was nice song getting to know you all and thank you so much baby, bring cooper to the thank screen so we're trying much. to see y'all but <laughs> ah, thank you but enjoy the rest of y'all day um if you're black stay black if you're queer stay queer if you're here baby stay here with us oh okay so we were really trying to get on the screen with <laughs> let me stop like I said, just connect with us if y'all really want to learn more because we're always here to um, educate and inspire people like you. But yeah, um, bye. Hasta la vista.